and everybody OG Sean here I've been a little under the weather lately but I'm feeling better now <clears throat> I still can't talk much so uh, I don't know how much talking I'll do on this video but I just felt like I needed to do a drawing to get back into it um, let's see here what do we want to do today I think I'll save the uh, creepy stuff for tonight when I do a live stream I think today we're just going to do another landscape so uh, you can see here I use uh, Autodesk sketchbook and uh, I use my XP pen tablet uh, it's a pretty cheap setup and uh, I do pay a subscription for uh, my Autodesk and I do think that it's worth it to have the pro features uh, this is actually the Autodesk uh, sketchbook enterprise edition that I'm using today so we're just throwing in some big colors here with the uh, the cloud brush one of the built-in cloud brushes you can download all these brushes for free out there on the, the Autodesk website. And uh, I really enjoy these, these brushes. It's kind of like if you just went and bought uh, some big foam brushes if you were doing some traditional work. Or a big fan brush or something like that. Mm. got all different kind of textures and you can change the intensity by uh, pulling this little puck up or down changes the intensity of the brush and the uh, left and right change the size of it so. this is the color puck and again you click on that and you can select whatever color you're after and uh, then you can also uh, just like with the uh, you can left and right to change the the intensity of the color I'm sorry yeah the intensity and up and down for the luminance so pretty cool pretty cool little setup It's a little bit to get used to when you first start doing using these, but uh, once you get used to them, uh, I think you really like them. And I just like to kind of throw in a lot of weird kind of colors uh, to start with. And then uh, we just kind of build something from there. I don't really have a big plan on what I'm going to do. Uh, every one of these, uh, when they when they start popping out, uh, are just as much of a surprise to me as they are the you guys watching these things. So. And I do. Uh, I tried just weird different things. Uh, and uh, sometimes I try those on my live streams and <clears throat> sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. That's just the nature of the business. Alright, so I'll go down now and uh, I've got so many brushes. I lose track of them all. I'll go down now and I'll grab a, a smudge brush and uh, we're just going to kind of blend these together a little bit kind of like the old Bob Ross videos where he's just kind of dragging across blending these out and uh, I always start with you know pretty low intensity and then I'll step it up just a little bit kind of keeps you from uh, getting too crazy and messing it up now the other good thing with uh, doing digital work is that if you do screw up you, know, you can always go back and just either back up uh, 
by using the uh, backup arrow undo arrow or you can just uh, if you got it layered out you can just delete that layer or start a new layer right on top of it all right so now we're going to start a new layer and we got to kind of start thinking about what we're what we're going to do with this thing here um, I'm thinking <clears throat> we're going to throw some mountains in here in the background and uh, just just random shapes is, is all you really need and I really like the uh, the kind of sunset landscapes uh, where you can really keep your mountains and your uh, your background or your uh, your objects dark uh, and then have the uh, sun shining through that's kind of really my favorite type I'm going to make that brush a little bigger bring it down in here and uh, at this point don't worry about like trying to perfectly um, shape everything out just throw some random shapes in there don't get too concerned with uh, making every little peak and rock formation exactly the way you want it just throw it in there okay so here's another little trick I use um, once I throw my big shapes down and you can go back with an eraser and uh, if you have the intensity light it takes a whole lot of scrubbing to get something to go away but if you just turn the intensity up a little bit on these things I mean it will chop it down and then you can get some nice fine sharp edges and uh, it will look a whole lot more intentional and that's kind of the uh, the trick of all art is uh, you want it to look like you really uh, put a lot of intention into this into the details and everything else but uh, actually a lot of it is is just letting your brush do the work for you and learning how to take advantage of those textures and but you do want nice uh, sharp edges I prefer sharp edges some people don't and it's whatever you prefer it's your art you do with it what you want If you uh, if you watch my videos much, you'll notice that I do a lot of work with these erasers, almost as much as I do with the paint brushes. So now we've got our our mountains established here, kind of our background scene. And uh, if we want anything to be on top of these mountains, or like a, you, if you want an added texture to the mountain, you're going to add a layer above it. This will uh, put everything on the face of these mountains or in front of them in the sky. 
if you want uh, to do anything else with the background all you'll do is drag that layer down and make sure that it's below the mountains actually we want it below the mountains and above the skyline so that way when I go back to my cloud brushes and I'll find the one I like uh, so we want some kind of big old orangey looking clouds so now uh, this layer is between the sky and the mountains so when I make these clouds uh, I guess I better turn the intensity back up huh? and maybe make them a little bigger all right so when I now when I throw these clouds in you're gonna see that they are on the sky so they're showing up above the sky but behind the mountains and uh, what you'll do, what I like to do is kind of see how I took this orange, which kind of matches the, the horizon here. And uh, so it kind of makes these clouds pop as if they're climbing up in the horizon. And then uh, you can also do a color sample if you want it to exactly match and just grab the sample of wherever you want it to match from. And then you can just kind of go up from there into the the more purpley and then do the same with the purple into the blue and then um, I'll sample the blue uh, but I like to take that and make it a little darker and uh, that's a little too intense there Still a little too intense. Maybe we need to change to a different cloud. And we're going to turn the intensity way down on this. There we go. That way it's kind of going off into a dark horizon. And if you really want to get crazy, uh, You can throw a few stars up here to kind of make it look like a, you know, really late sunset. You can actually go all black all the way up here if you if you so choose. So now with this more intense blue, as you see, is when I come down into these purple clouds, it's going to give them a lot more contrast and a lot more shape. And I'll do the same with the purple clouds. I'll grab it just a little darker. And we'll come down into the red. And you can see it starts making them pop out just a tad. And then uh, we'll go into the red. And uh, we'll make that a little bit more intense. And we'll come down into the orange. Just a little bit. And you don't want to get crazy with any of this stuff. It is basically what I'm trying to say here. And if you do, just hit that backup button. And now we're going to kind of contrast out this orange just a little bit. And we'll put a big old sunshine coming uh, in this area somewhere. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. So now if if this, uh, you know, this area here, I'm not sure if I'm going to make this just a uh, ravine or a river. I may make it one or the other. I'm not sure. But if you are going to do a water reflection, uh, I will show you in the future how to use the this symmetry tool here. It's a really powerful, cool tool to use uh, to create water effects. So if I wanted to show the reflection of the sky, uh, I could it, whenever I paint here, it's going to reflect it down here, and that's a it's a real good way of making water reflections. Uh, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet. I may have to do that the hard way since I didn't start with the symmetry tool. Uh, but, and uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out as we go. So now, do we want some puffy clouds in the sky? Let's see. Just test it out. See how it looks first. 
it looks pretty cool but maybe just a little bit more intense just a little bit and that's way too big and this is the advantage you have with uh, with digital art is that you can back up I do uh, traditional work too uh, and uh, I'll probably try to do one this week I do love doing traditional work as well but um, my main love is a uh, digital work and we're getting a little too crazy there so I'll show you something else we can do what we're gonna do is add a new layer on top of this cloud layer and uh, we're gonna just throw some heavy clouds in just heavy clouds kinda all over the place here and then we're gonna go back with this eraser again and we're going to make it pretty good size and then we're going to turn the intensity all the way down and then we can start almost kind of blending out these clouds the big clouds and then we can much more control this and take our time and get it the way we want it to, to look and if you were to try to do this um, without adding this layer uh, it would so I'm going back to the cloud layer you see it will erase everything not just your clouds but if you keep the intensity turned down the opacity or whatever you want to call it uh, it'll help you out okay so now do we want this to be a river or a ravine I'm not sure so again we're going to go back to our mountain layer and I'm going to add a layer on top of that because I feel like this all this stuff we're fixing to do should go on top of that um, and now I'm just going to find a texture that I like and uh, this is a little bit of a trial and error so we may try one and then go back and do another one so I'm going to make a pretty good size brush and I'm going to turn the intensity down to about 10% and we're just going to start seeing what we got. And again with this being a new layer when I go back with my eraser I'm only erasing that new texture that we just put in so you can get everything back the way you wanted it and uh, so I'm sitting here looking at this and I'm thinking I'm thinking more river than uh, ravine so we're going to throw a river in there and I'm actually going to take that whole uh, texture brush out so because I didn't start with the symmetry brush uh, we're going to hack this up here and I'm going to kind of show you how to cheat this a little bit So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to grab a colored brush and I'm not sure which one I want to use just yet. Let's see. We'll just use a regular old colored pencil and uh, we are going to start sampling our uh, sky colors here so that we can match them up with our river and then uh, I just start drawing right over the top uh, 
of all of this and I know it's going to kind of freak everybody out for just a second. as high as we have to go so then uh, we'll go down here all right so right there we just want some of this right here all right so now again we come back with our eraser and since we got kind of our sample colors we can just uh, uh, and here I go screwing this up trying to explain it to you turn your symmetry off first and then you go back in here and you start erasing all of this out And it's so much easier if you, um, that's why it's, it's actually better to plan these things out. It's so much easier to, uh, to start that symmetry tool off to begin with so that you already have these colors down here. Then you can draw your mountains over the top of them and your river will just pop out or your body of water, whatever you choose. I'm not really sure if this is going to be a river or a lake. We'll we'll see all right so now uh we've just kind of got our base colors down in this uh little canyon here uh, so what i'll use is uh i'm going to use my blur brush again but i'm going to use one of these line tools and it's just going to be this right here just the line and uh kind of a cool way i found to uh to make your water look right and there are all kinds of waves and uh, water brushes built into this but I kind of like to just use this to start with and uh, what we'll do is just kind of blur this whole thing and then we can also throw in some uh, We'll throw on a new layer and I'll go in with a some kind of a water brush. They got all kinds of waves and water and stuff like that. Uh, ripples. And uh, I've just got so many brushes here. Let's see which one do we want to try. Uh, Alright, we're going to try this one right here. And uh, I'm going to kind of actually make these pretty bright. And uh, again, it's kind of trial and error. So I kind of start with low intensity and turn my line tool off here. And uh, we'll kind of see what we got going on here. As you can see, those makes really cool effects. Uh, and you just go back with your eraser again and you clean up your edges
Now there are a lot of tools to zoom in and zoom out on this stuff. Um, and uh, sometimes I do zoom in, zoom out. Uh, but a lot of times I don't. I just kind of like to look at it the way it is. As if I'm drawing on a little 10 inch canvas. So now that we've got that little effect in there. And it does look good just the way it is. But I'm still going to blur it just a little bit. And I'll take that intensity down to 5. And I'm going to grab my line tool again. And we're going to drag across and blur this one more time. And it just kind of smooths everything out. All right. All right. Now, uh, way off in the distance there on the top of that hill, I could imagine that there might be an old dead tree over there. So I will actually grab uh, one of my other favorite brushes is these uh, oil brushes and I'm going to grab this fine tipped oil brush and these things are a little tricky because it actually wants to mimic as if uh, this was all oil paint and you're dragging it uh, so you got to be a little bit careful with it and sometimes it acts a little weird and this is one of those occasions uh, where by all means I should be zoomed way in and uh, really putting some detail into this thing but uh, I just don't want to and again it's your art you do what you want with it right yeah, we got a little crazy there And if you want to go back and touch this up, uh, like I said, most people do. I just usually don't. I kind of like the the raw, rough feel of these things. I think, uh, especially with digital work, you can get caught up in trying to make everything perfect and uh, never finish a piece and uh, maybe put another one right here a little off in the distance this one's going to be in even worse shape I think you could spend uh, months and days and weeks trying to go back and perfect every line um, but I kind of think when you do that you you may be missing the point now if you're doing it for like a client or a business or it's got to be perfect that's that's different but if you're just drawing art uh, making art just just to enjoy or just to relax with I wouldn't get so caught up in trying to make everything perfect you'll just drive yourself nuts All right. so we're we're cooking along here now I'm gonna stick with that oil brush for just a minute and uh, what I'm gonna do is kind of work on these reflections a little bit in the shoreline 
and I just kind of like the way the oil brush does this for me and again you could you could use a symmetry tool on this you could use all kinds of other tools but uh, like I said this is it's just kind of my thing so I just kind of do what makes me happy and we, of course we're going to blur this out a little bit so you don't have to exactly mirror what you got going on up there now we're going to go back to our blur brush again and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit because I don't want everything getting crazy and uh I'll hit it a couple times with this line tool. And you want to kind of make sure that you're staying, you know, horizontal and, or vertical or whatever when you use these tools. If you start going off sideways, you're going to kind of make a mess. And so now I'm going to go in with an airbrush and uh, whoops. sometimes when you're sliding your pucks around you just kind of sling them right off the board and then I'm just going to kind of turn that line tool off now I'm just going to kind of come in here and start darkening this stuff up just to hide a few of those little brush strokes And I know that there's tons of other ways that you can do this and I know that in Photoshop you could do this or in whatever other program you could do that. I just started using Sketchbook and uh, that's the one I like so that's the one I'm going to stick with. And this has all just been trial and error for me. Uh, it's not like uh, I did take a couple of art classes in college, but uh, nothing, nothing intense or anything like that. So now I'm going to do these blurs without using uh, the line tool. So I have to be just a little bit more careful with these. And that's because I don't want um, I don't want to drag too much. And I want to kind of put a few little squiggles in here and there. So I'm going to drag that out and then Blur it back. All right. So right here in our foreground, uh, we've got this little hill or rock that's popping out right here, and I actually want to kind of make that look like it's really close to us. So I'm going to add a little bush and a, a little bit of grass right here in front of us. Uh, and i got to find my brush. And you can do this manually. I could, I could sit here with a uh, with the oil uh, paintbrush and <coughs> excuse me, draw out every little blade of grass. But somebody was kind enough to make this awesome little grass texture brush. And uh, it's one of one of my favorites here, and so it'll just kind of look like a little grassy hillside here, 
and uh, if you just kind of play with this thing you can make all kinds of wonderful things start popping out and it's just kind of that little touch now on this grass too uh, because we got this sunset going on here you can also uh, grab a little bit of this orange and uh, you got to kind of be careful with this you don't want to go too crazy turn the intensity way down and you can go in there and throw in some highlights and uh, sometimes it's a little hard to see but uh, over here in the dark part you can see what's going on If you'll kind of uh, that may be too too light, we'll go a little bit darker, a little bit smaller. So down here, just below where the grass is showing over the top of that hill, you'll just put a few little highlights and hints, and uh, that's going to give you a nice effect right there. Then I'll go back with the black and kind of break that up a little bit. Turn the intensity back up. We go all the way black. And as you can see, that'll kind of break those shapes up a little bit. Give you a really nice uh, effect right there. It's also got this little little twig effect here and I like it but it kind of goes crazy on me a lot of times I don't feel like I have a hundred percent control over that thing so it kind of worries me I don't use it a whole lot but now so we want to put in like a uh, just kind of a traditional bush right here uh, we'll just kind of go up and then we'll shrink the brush down and this is what I was talking about you can sit here and draw all this out and they have a lot of built-in textures but if you kind of want to do something uh, without using a textured brush uh, just come in here and just mess with it you know just just play with it you never know and the cool thing is like you can take each one of those textured brushes and uh, you can add you can customize it yourself like uh, if you wanted it to do a, a different thing a different texture you can actually go in there and manipulate that thing and and, and uh, you can make them do all kinds of stuff So now uh, on our little bush here, uh, let me beef this thing up just a little bit more. You can grab any of these kind of spongy textures. Uh, there's some of these snow textures that actually make really good kind of bushy leaves. Uh, I just like to look around and see which one I like. 
and uh, kind of partial to, to red flowers. So add a new layer, turn your intensity up, and uh, find out what size you want these things to be. We're gonna probably go pretty big here. And uh, we're just gonna start adding in some some flowery leaves. Or they could just be leaves, whatever you want. This is your thing, your thing. <laughs> and uh, throw in you know, the darker colors so that you give it some contrast. Sounds like my old dog in there is having a nightmare. I'll have to go check on him here in a second. <laughs> He's an old dude. I talk about him a lot on here, but he's probably 22, 23 years old. Probably, uh, probably 21, 22 years old, but he's old. He's an old dog. And just play with these colors and stuff. And if you don't like it, just just back up, take them back off, right? But really, what I'm trying to do is just kind of layer this up. And I'll actually, I'm going to grab a different texture, and then we're going to throw some of that out of here. Because what I'll do is uh, I'll layer all kinds of textures on top of each other and different colors of that texture to kind of get the effect I'm after. I know that looks kind of weird right now, but uh, let's see if we can bring it back. guess the main the main thing is just kind of be brave and, and just go for it and see what happens I mean you can always undo let's see no I'm not liking that And again, this is just trial and error. I'm just, I'm just playing with these different textures and brushes and intensities and colors, and we'll just see what pops out at us. We will try this leaf thing here. That's huge.
thing too, like with these uh, most drawing tablets, uh, the harder you push, the more intense it lays the paint down. So some of these custom brushes get a little tricky. Like that one's not going to, it's just not going to cooperate with us. Now see I'm getting way out of whack here with my bush. So we're going to trim it. And we're going to trim this bush with the eraser. And I kind of like this little ragged effect uh, that I can get with these erasers. Kind of gives it more of a fantastical feel. One thing I like to keep in mind when I'm doing these kind of landscapes is uh, this doesn't always have to be like in your reality or on this planet when you're doing these things. You can let your imagination fly. This could be some other planet, some other dimension, some other realm. So don't think that you have to perfectly draw a cherry blossom tree or a a rock or a frog you just kind of let your imagination run this this may be some planet light years away from here or something If I can, I don't think I can, so I'm just going to have to throw in a little bit of color right there. Okay. And now, uh, I may go and touch that bush up just a little bit more. I'm going to find my brush.
Alrighty, so now we're done with that bush for right now. We're going to put just a little bit of a highlight on these mountains. And again, I'm just going to find a texture that I like. And uh, we're going to start putting a little highlight on those. And I won't go very crazy at all with these things because uh, it's far away and it shouldn't ha shouldn't have a whole lot of detail to it and I did start a new layer for this because I will go back and use my eraser and cut some of this back down layers and it's going to be this very first one um, where we just laid down the, the base colors for our sky and uh, we've got a brush built into this it's called uh, it's a glow brush and uh, we're going to see how it looks on this layer first and these things work really well, but they can be really intense. So you got to kind of be a little bit careful. And the reason I'm picking this layer is because, as you can see, when I start putting this glow down, it's actually going to stay behind those clouds that we laid down, which is what we want. Now the more you run it, the more intense it gets until it becomes white. And uh, that's kind of what we want. We want it to just kind of look like a setting sun back there. And then we will throw a little bit of highlight behind each layer of clouds. corresponding to that color just to kind of keep things broke up and just touch it here and there you don't have to go crazy with it you can go crazy with it if you want but I, I recommend not doing that okay so now we're going back up here and uh, this is going to be actually one of our last layers. We are going to put the reflection uh, of this sun into our water. 
and then we're going to blend that out just a little bit so we'll lay it down and then you can make a nice big reflective shine right there and then we'll go back with our eraser and we'll carve out some of this that we don't want Microphone for you. All right, and then one last thing I'm going to do with my airbrush is I'm just going to kind of darken this. Skyline up right here. So I just kind of want it to to look like it. The sun's really starting to go down, and this is really just kind of the last dying light here of the day. kind of gives it that nice contrast there but, uh, we may need to blur the water a little bit more and I may add just a few little stars I'm gonna make those nice and white popping up right on the edge of the night and you know it's actually a lot harder to make just random stars than you would think it's hard not to to just out of habit uh, start drawing some kind of a pattern all right so then what we'll do some of these stars are going to be bright so they're going to get a little shine to them and some of these are going to be really bright And we are actually going to give them a nice little twinkle. But you don't want to twinkle all of them, just a couple. If you twinkle them all, it doesn't really come out looking that good. And again, the twinkle is also built in. It's a brush. And uh, if you want to kind of break up uh, and make your stars all look a little different the way they actually are in the sky, you can add just a little different color glow to them. 
my apologies, I came and just a few red ones up there. So folks, that's about going to wrap this one up. Uh, like I said, I could go down here and touch this water up and make it look a lot better. Uh, I could add some more shoreline in here. Uh, but what I like to do right now is uh, we're just going to take this and I'm going to open it up in a different program called Photor. It always save your work. That's, that's a big hint too. Uh, we're just going to call this uh, Last Light. And uh, Photor is just another, uh, a lot of those same features are in Sketchbook, they're in Photoshop, they're in um, all these other programs. But the, like, again, it's just a software that I'm used to using, and uh, so I use it a lot. Uh, just find the ones that work good for you. So I take all this artwork that I've done, and I'm going to open it up in Photor, and... Uh, I'm going to adjust it out in Photor, and I'll bring it over to you here in just a second as soon as it opens up on my other monitor. And I, I like looking at it on this monitor uh, because it's got a lot, this monitor, my big monitor that you can't see because the camera's sitting on it. It's got a lot better color uh, saturation than my, my old laptop monitor. So all I'm doing in here is I'm going and adjusting out the uh, contrast, the hues, the temperature, and I'm trying to kind of make it look more like a painting than a digital painting. And uh, it's just something I like to do. Some people really don't uh, want to mess with their their painting. They just want to do it all uh, by brute force and uh, put it out there, and that's all cool. Uh, but to each their own. This is just <clears throat> this is just a technique I like to use, and uh, it helps me kind of realize my vision for these paintings and I apologize that you can't see what's going on but again it's like uh, the color on my big monitor is so much better wow I'm gonna bring it up here in just a second and show you what I did It'll be for another video. I'll show you guys how I adjust these things out. To make them look the way I want. Okay, that's pretty good right there. And we're already an hour into this video, so I don't... I don't want to start a whole new hour-long tutorial on how I adjust these out. So here's the before, and uh, get to it here, and here's the after. Now, actually, uh, you know, you can see I muted down the colors so it doesn't look so cartoony. Uh, I've darkened the sky up with a contrast, and uh, I've kind of sharpened it up a little bit so that the the, the details on the trees and stuff kind of pop out a little bit more and uh, the last thing we got left to do here is sign this bad boy and I like to sign it with the oil brush and uh, we'll sign it in yellow today It's hard for me to get used to writing OG San 20 because it is the new year. And I hope everybody's having a great new year. And I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this. Hope maybe this inspired you, gives you some ideas. I am uh, never claimed to be the greatest artist in the world, but I hopefully I can inspire people to pick up a 
pick up a paintbrush, pick up a stylus, pick up a pen, pick up some markers, and just start drawing. You don't have to be great. Just get your ideas out there and just start playing with things. Trial and error, and you, you will amaze yourself at what you can do. That's going to wrap it up, folks. And like we always say around here, till the next video, Oji-san out.